I am Reverend Deborah Frazier Sermons, and today is Thursday, September the 23rd, 2021, and I'm here with Mrs. Merlene Holmes. Yep. So welcome, Mrs. Holmes. Nice to be here. Yes. Uh, before we begin with the questioning, I want to give you a little background as to the setting. Uh, I am a member of the Alachua County Community Remembrance Project mm -hmm. and the Truth and Reconciliation. And I'm also a member of the subcommittee, the Alachua Noonanville subcommittee mm -hmm. that falls up under that, the county project. Mm -hmm. And we are collecting oral histories of our valued senior citizens in the city of Alachua, the good life community. Mm -hmm. And so we're honored to have you here today. So thank you for consenting to this interview. I'm just glad to be here too. <laughs> thank you. We're also partnering with the University of Florida, the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program, mm -hmm. and they're providing the video recording. And uh, the University of Florida Library will preserve this, this interview mm -hmm. in a video for until eternity. Mm. All right. We're also partnering with the Alachua Public Library. So we're thankful for the partnership that we have with the University of Florida mm -hmm. and with the Alachua Public Library. All right. All right. So we're ready to begin with the questioning. Okay. Um, just tell me a little bit about yourself in terms of uh, what is your name? Include your maiden name. Okay. My name is Merlene Powers Holmes. And how old are you? <laughs> September 30th, which is this month, I'll mm -hmm. be 88 years old. All right. Well, you don't look 88. You don't even look in the 80s. I'm 88. I will be. All right. God has been good to you. Oh, he has been. Yes. You bet that. Also. I, 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 I raised five kids. Wow. You've done a great job. I've met your daughter. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your parents, their names and where they're from. My parents um, was Al Washington and Alberta Powers. His he, first name was Al? Washington Powers. My dad was named Washington Powers. Washington Powers. My okay. mama was named Alberta Ross Powers. Okay. Uh -huh. And we was originated out in the Manioc area. I don't know if you heard of the Manioc area. Yes. When we had property out there, my daddy bought a home out there. That, well, it wasn't a pff, fancy home, but right. we, he, he bought a place for us to live. Yes. And we lived out there until I, let me see, I went to start coming to, they cut out the schools out there. Yes. They cut out the little country schools out there. Right. So we had to ride to Alachua somehow here in Alachua for schooling. Okay. And it was a, our first bus driver was Mr. Boston, Boston Gainey. Mm -hmm. He was driving, he had a truck mm -hmm. and on the truck was a little cab <laughs> and they would have the little, little things in the back for you to step up on to get in the truck. Right. Well, we was only kids in the back of the truck, and he was in the seat of the truck in the front. Right. And uh, we went for that for about a year. So my father said, no, I don't want my kids riding in something like that to school. Mm -hmm. So he sent me to Starks. Look at me. Mm -hmm. Look at me. Mm -hmm. He sent, us, sent me to Starks to go to school and live with my sister in Starks. Okay. And I went there, and I did two years in Starks, and I came back to over in Alachua to go to school, and there was Mr. Boss, there was Mr. Burgess's son oh, okay. driving a bus, a little regular flat top school bus. Okay. And then we start riding that bus from our home in Mario up here to Alachua. Okay. His name was Lamas Burgess, that's what his name was, Lamas okay. Burgess. All right. And we start riding his little bus up here. Okay. Um, then after, his bus, Mr. Ball, uh, I believe it was Dado Welcome, used to drive one of the buses. Oh, okay. And so I began coming here to school. I was in, uh, when I came back from Starks, then when I came back up here, I was in eighth grade. Okay. Then I start riding that little bus up here. And in eighth grade, I, I liked my little school up here. The teachers were very stern and mm -hmm. 
they was down on you about your lesson and all that. Mm -hmm. Because my math teacher was Mrs. Mabain, which wow. the principal of that school was, that school was named after Mr. Mabain. Okay. And he was the principal, and his wife was my math teacher. Okay. Very stern. Mm. You had, she had it fixed so we would have to come to her class before lunchtime. Wow. So we would come to her class for lunch night every, and she would give us a problem to do in order to get out to go to lunch. You had to get that problem to get out there to go to lunch. Mm -hmm. So we would work in there and try to get our problems to get out, go to school. If, because if you didn't get that problem to go to lunch, mm -hmm. you did not get any lunch. Wow. You did not get any lunch. So I was always, I tried to always get my lesson. I got my lesson out, go out and get our lunch. You wouldn't believe. My mama and them had given me like 25 cents. Mm -hmm. And you would get a soda and a pack of crackers. Cookies. No, it wasn't cookies, it was a pack of crackers. Mm -hmm. And that's what we had for lunch until we get back home in the afternoon. Okay. And it just was, but we were happy with that. Right. Very happy with it. And then I uh, was a, a majorette at that school. Uh -huh. I first was a little cheerleader. Mm -hmm. Then I was a majorette. You might know Mildred Millette. Mildred Millette, she was. Richard Parker's wife, she is Richard Parker's wife, because mm -hmm. she's still living in Gainesville. Okay. She was our team leader. Okay. And we used to have the little short <laughs> things on, you know, yes. and our little batons and all going, and our little white boots with the mm -hmm. tassel in it. They was, they was awesome. We thought we was in heaven when we had that. Wow. <laughs> and we was a marching and going, you wouldn't believe, do you remember? The Burgess is here? Yes, I do. Okay. Mr. Burgess, the old man now, mm -hmm. he would beat the drum because that was the only music we had was wow. the drum beating. <laughs> and he would beat the drum with the soda water bottle. Mm. And we had to march by that music because it was with the soda water bottle. And we would be marching down that street just like it was nobody business in our nice little pretty short skirts, mm -hmm. and we were going, and Mildred Ouellette was marching and leading us, and we were going. We thought we, in, we was in heaven, you know, because <laughs> yes. at that time, it was really, you were somebody when you got into the cheerleading group and mm -hmm. the, and the uh, what you call those people? Um, the majorette? The, the, the majorette, mm -hmm. and I was a cheerleader for the right. football team. Right. So. I used to follow the football team. Wow. Cheerleader for the football team. That was years ago. Wow. That's how I met my little boyfriend I married after wow. school, was Alexander Holmes. And he was on the football team? He was, he was, he was a quarterback on the football team. <laughs> and I would just follow the football team because I was a cheerleader. Yes, And yes, I had to follow yes. the football team. Yes. And it was a lot of fun at that time, but then, you know, it went on and on. We just got married after school, had a family, mm -hmm. and he passed away about in 2006. Wow, that's a long life. That's yeah, about, yeah, yeah, what, we, 50, 60 plus years of marriage? We had five kids. Wow. Three boys and two girls. Wow, that's a blessing. We lost our second girl, but to cancer. Oh, I'm sorry mm -hmm. to hear that. So I just got the one daughter, Pam. And I don't never forget that old school. Mm. I remember when we used to, the football, when playing the football, they was playing right behind where those Hitchcock apartments. And on that field, <clears throat> there was nothing but rocks, just rocks. And I don't know how they played in those rocks, but wow. those boys played good football right out there on those rocks. Wow. It just was, I, I don't know, it just happened like that. Wow. And I graduated in 1952. Wow. I think that's the same year uh, your friend, Miss Johnson, graduated. No, she graduated in 1951. Had to be because she graduated a year before I graduated. Okay, okay. Because uh -huh. okay. we graduated in 52. All right. Uh-huh. All right. Now, where were your uh, parents from? My parents was from, my mama family was from Miami, Florida. Oh, okay. But my daddy was from West Miami Oak, 
You ever heard of Monty Oak? Oh, yes, I know what that is. That's a beautiful yeah. area. Yeah, that's right out in Monty Oak. That's where my daddy was from. Okay. And that's where we were read up at out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. What did they do for a living? My daddy farmed. Okay. And my granddaddy was living out there to his daddy. Oh, okay. So it was a generational uh -huh. thing. Okay, uh -huh. good. Good. They all lived out there together. So that seems we thought that was a happy life, you know. We, yes. Because we were kids and we didn't know, but we were doing real good. Because uh, my daddy never would let his family, his daughters go and work in the field or nothing like that. He, he didn't like that. And he never would let us go out in the field or work. You know, back in that generation, I understand um, the need to protect the children, particularly the mm -hmm. daughters. Mm -hmm. And it seems like they were treated They're, differently they, um, than, than mm -hmm. the sons in the there same family. Go. Never would let us work in nobody's field. Did you have any siblings, and how many? Who, me? Yes. No? No, in terms of your brothers and sisters. Yeah, I got, right now, I only got two sisters. It was nine of us. Nine, okay. All gone except two sisters. Okay. Two sisters and myself, okay. which is three. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, are any of your living uh, sisters, are they older than you? Are they younger? I'm the oldest one right now. Okay. I'm the oldest one now. My oldest sister died in last July. Okay. And then uh, the others died long before that. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm the oldest right now. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. So you keep them in line? You remind them that you're the oldest? No, they're good girls. I don't have to do all that, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> But they know the pecking order. But they know I'm the oldest. Oh, okay. Yeah. They know the pecking order. Okay. Tell us about your uh, grandparents. My grandparents, um, I didn't know my grandmother on my daddy's side, but I do my, knew my grandfather. He died at age 98. Wow. And he lived in Maniok, Frank okay. Powers. My mama's parents lived in Miami, Florida. Mm -hmm. And my daddy had a little, he bought a, a car. You wouldn't believe it. He put six children in the back of that car, and him and my mom would drive to Miami every Christmas to see our grandmother in that little car. Wow. With six children and him and my mother, and we would drive to Miami because my grandmother always lived in Miami. Mm -hmm. And we used to ride down there every Christmas because that's the only time we would see them when Christmas come. The car had to have some size. <laughs> For and eight I, people, it had to have I'm some size. I'm telling you, all of us was in that car, and my mom and dad, dad was in the front, mm -hmm. and all the kids was packed in the back. We went all the way to Miami to my grandmama's house. Wow. And back. And back. Bless the Lord, the car didn't break down. Amen. Amen. Do you know anything about your grandparents' parents? No. Okay. Now, you mentioned earlier your elementary school. That included a school in Montioke, and then you went to Stark? Yeah, and then came back to Alachua. Okay. And I graduated from ACT, Alachua okay. County Training School. That's what it was. ACT. And we just okay. call it ACT for short. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Now, out of all the teachers and um, administrators at school throughout all your years, are there any of those that you remember that stood out? that really influenced you as a young person? Yes. Uh, I like my math teacher, Miss Mabane. She was strict. And, 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 and I like Miss Mabane. I liked it. my English teacher, Miss Williams. Hmm. Uh, let me see. And of course, my PE teacher was Miss Motry. Okay. I don't know if any you know Miss Motry or no. not. She was our PE teacher. I liked her. Okay. They were all good. Well, actually, I got along with all my school teachers because mm -hmm. I was always humble and would do whatever they tell me to do. Because mm -hmm. if I didn't, there was something waiting on me at home. Okay. And you feared that more than anything. <laughs> uh, okay. I understand. I understand. I had to obey my, my teachers. Yes. Yes. 
I wish that was the standard today. We need that too. Yes. Did uh, your family attend church and did they attend oh, church yes. on a regular basis? Yes, my daddy was a deacon at the New Jerusalem Baptist Church. And of course my mama was the mother of the church. Mm -hmm. And we were little kids going to school. And we had to be in Sunday school every Sunday. Now we went to Sunday school, we had to be there. Okay. And church. And church. And sometime go back in the afternoon for night service. That's right. I, I, I remember those times. Yes, yes. And if the church wasn't closed, you basically had like a picnic on site. Every family mm -hmm. bought something. Mm -hmm. Every family, yeah. Bring a little food out there for us to eat. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, re I recall that. You're right. So it hasn't been that long since that's been done. I recall that. But going to church, what impact do you believe that's had on your life? It had a lot because it helped me to rear my children in, in, in that same way, you know. Okay. I, I was, I tried to walk in my mom and daddy's feet, footstep mm -hmm. because I wanted, a, I wanted my children to be good children. I wanted my children to obey the teacher. I wanted my children to do what the teacher asked them to do. And don't come home and tell me if the teacher whip your butt, don't mm -hmm. come home and tell me because I know you were doing so. Mm -hmm. And that's why she had to get you. <laughs> I never did blame the teachers for nothing like that because I don't, didn't consider my kids being the best kids in the school, right. but they were good kids. Right. Boy, have things changed. It has changed. Now they don't play that stuff no more. <laughs> They'll cuss the teacher out. I know, I know. And then the kids can talk about adults. We oh, couldn't yes, grow up. Yeah. Now, see, that wasn't allowed in my house. No. And if I say, you know, Miss, that old Miss, my mama said, watch it. You don't right. say it. That's Miss so-and-so. Yes. And I bet not ever hear you say that anymore. And you better not say it. That sounds familiar to my upbringing also. That's right. Now, you mentioned that you were involved. You were a cheerleader. Mm -hmm. You were a majorette. Mm -hmm. Were there any other organizations and activities you did growing up? That's a button. I tried a little basketball. Okay. I tried a little volleyball. Oh, yeah. We were um, talking about activities and things you did mm -hmm. as a child. Mm -hmm. Did you have any childhood hobbies, other things you liked to do when you weren't in school? When I weren't in school? Yeah. You mean home with my parents? Yes, yes. There would be some yeah. hobbies you had. I had a job washing dishes. Yeah, <laughs> wash dishes. <laughs> clean, help clean the house. Okay. Sweep the yards, all that stuff. We did it. We had three brothers, but mm -hmm. you know, we had to get out there too. Right, mm -hmm. right, most definitely. I didn't know if you had uh, hobbies such as um, collecting, didn't have paper dolls back then? Yeah. Or they had. Yeah, we um, got paper dolls for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did. Ooh, that's a long way back there. Ooh. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> See, I'm not even close to you. I remember paper dolls. Oh, Lord. way back then. Yes, yes. Uh, what about jackstones? We, I used to put jackstones even after I was a big old girl. Long. Well, we guess what? Uh, me too. Matter of fact, Cracker Barrel used to sell a golden set. Mm -hmm. you now you know I had to set. I had so to get one. Yeah, because I considered myself the Jackstone Queen. Oh. So I had to get a golden set. Oh. And I got paper dolls to you share with my got daughter. Your paper dolls? I can't find them. Oh, I know. But whenever I find them, I do get them. <laughs> you can't buy them anymore, huh? If it has to be one of those old stores yeah. that you yeah. might find paper uh -huh. dolls. Yes, most definitely. Okay, but when you look back at your childhood, can you describe? from what your parents shared with you. What was different between, what was the difference between your parents' childhood and your childhood? Um, really not much because we was strict like my mom them was. You know, we was raised to be like that, so <laughs> I did the same thing for mine. I tried to raise them to try to be respectful, obey people, never say nothing you don't suppose to say mm -hmm. to an older person. Right. You respect that person, respect right. people. Right. And I trained my children to do that. Ms. Brown can tell you. 
Did your mother have to work when she was growing up? Do you know? Did she share that with you all? Yes, my mama had to work. You know, cooking these people kitchen, I think. Okay. Yeah, she had to work. That is um, part of what our uh, ancestors have was, had to do. My mama was working for some people in stocks called Bunk Thomas, they ran a sawmill. Oh, okay. I'll never forget. She worked, she cooked, she washed for those people, honey. That's how we, that was part of our living, too. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, your parents worked hard and yeah, did, they did everything they could to they take care of their family. They did everything they could to supply their family and take care of their children. And if they went anywhere and they told us, you bet not go so-and-so, you didn't go there. There wasn't no sneaking out and all that stuff. Because if you did, don't worry, somebody going to tell it. And you're going to be burning back there when they come. That's right. You're going to face the consequences oh, yes. of it. Oh, yes. yes, yes, yes. In your adult years, you mentioned that uh, you married your high school sweetheart. Yes, I did. Was a quarterback of the football team. Yes, Alexander Holmes. <laughs> How was uh, life like in the early adult years, being that you married real young? It was pretty, t you know. I, what I had to do, I j I had to go to work too. I had to work because uh, he was trying to farm. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, when we got married, we, was, we got married and started living out there with his mother on the old home place. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had to farm in order to, I shouldn't say this, to keep, to pay off some debts that his sisters and brothers had made, and right. they were all gone off the place. Right, right. And so he had to stay home and farm. Right. And I had to be the one to go to work. Okay. So I would drive to work to Gainesville every day and back, and he would be home and taking care of the farms. We figured that was the best way to try to get rid of all whatever they left there. Right. Like some went to borrow money from what you call them finance companies and thing, and they didn't yeah. pay it and they left it on there. Right. And the place was put up as oh, collateral. My husband yes. had to stay home and farm. That's the quickest way to get the money to pay the pay it off. Right. And then I went to work on a, I was working for dry cleaners. Mm -hmm. They had a machine where you hang the shirts on. Right. And mash a button and it would press the shirts, you yes. know, iron the shirts. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that was, that was, that was bad though, but I had to do it because yes. we had to try to, that's how we earned that place that we living on, even though it was a family place. Right. But I don't like to bring personal stuff up in places like this. No, I, I understand, but I will share with you, other families mm -hmm. have been in similar situations mm -hmm. and had to do the same mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. where the family property was put up as collateral by siblings and someone had to get the property straight. Well, that's the reason why we did like we did. He stayed mm -hmm. home and farmed, because that was the quickest way to get the money to right. pay off what debts they owe right. so we can accumulate the place and that's why I'm on the place right now. Right. Because right. that's what happened. Well, that's a very beautiful place. But that's why I'm out there. Very and I'm not planning place. on going anywhere. <laughs> I don't think you're going anywhere in the tap soon. Amen. Amen. Now, you mentioned working at the dry cleaning. Were there other jobs that you did throughout the years? Oh, yeah. I worked to the University of Florida. Okay. Mm, but I work in the cafeteria, like on the serving line. Okay. I work there. Now, where else I work? I work to Charlie. I worked out to talk with Charlie. Okay. But uh, it just got where I couldn't work out there any longer. Then I saw, then I left and went to SunTrust. Okay. You did. Um, and that's where I retired from SunTrust. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Like most young couples starting out and growing a family, mm -hmm. you work together as a partnership. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it, you know, uh, what advice? would you give young couples starting out now from what you've learned from your experience? I, now what I, you just got to work together. You got to make sure you're working together. Everybody don't want a card. Mm -hmm. um, and when you work like that, put your money together. Figure out what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Put your bill money aside. And it's always, a, 
My, I was trained to always save something if it ain't but $10. Mm -hmm. Always put back something. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it'll work out okay. Yes, it will. And that's the way my husband was. We put our money together and we'll pay our bills. And then he, he'll say, but Murr, we'll put aside this. Mm -hmm. And it was fine with me. I like that. Right. Let's save something. Don't spend everything you make. Right, exactly. Now that a lot of young people, especially young couples, can they make learn. mistakes. Yes, yes, and sometimes don't listen to the wisdom of the elders. That's right. Yes, most definitely. So you met your husband at school, mm -hmm. and uh, what about his family? His family was living the same place that I got right now. Okay. They was all living there. All right. Then. And as they grew up, I guess they moved away because when I married him, there was only his mother and one sister living out there. Okay. They they all gone now. Nobody living. There one sister living, and she almost a hundred years old. Wow. Is she still in the area? She, no, she living in Jacksonville. Okay. She living okay. in Jacksonville. She's the only sister. Okay. And Is there she... was about hmm, about ten, eleven of them. They wow. All gone. Wow. Um, the sister, your sister-in-law that's almost 100, mm -hmm. is she able to move around and drive like you are? No. <laughs> uh-uh. She's not, because she has dementia. Now, okay, so okay. They don't let her do anything. All okay, right. okay. I say that because um, in my life journey in visiting different places, mm -hmm. I have found out that a lot of people underestimate their elders, mm -hmm. underestimate them in terms of, they think they're feeble, mm -hmm. can't do anything. They and can. Um, can. I attended a church where it had a significant number of elders at that time, over 60, 70. Mm -hmm. And it was the ones in their 80s and 90s and 100 that was keeping the church going. Mm -hmm. And they were very mobile. They were That's just true. as spry as everybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. So it just shot down that norm that people have that at an older age, mm -hmm. you're not doing anything. That's because, not true. Because you're not doing anything. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I but they found that. other ways to be productive uh -huh. and they're working too uh -huh. and contributing. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And several of them, 100, they're cooking and visiting other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Life goes on, doesn't it? Lord bless my soul. I'll be 88 to 30th. Oh, you will be. Thank you, you will Jesus. be. You will be. You will be. When you became a parent, how did that impact your life? Well, it, I, I was just glad to have my kids. I was proud to have my children. Yes. And I didn't have them, I didn't have them like, as my parents could say, like cats having kittens. Mm -hmm. I had a child like this year, maybe the next two years I had another one, mm -hmm. and on like that. I never did have my children this Babies all the time. They call it like no. stair step. Yeah. Yeah. And that made a difference in rearing them. Oh, yeah. Since you had five. I had yeah. five kids. Yeah. yeah. You had some spacing in there. Mm -hmm. uh, if your husband was here, how, how do you think he would describe, you know, going from being a young man in high school to a husband and then becoming a parent? Was there this partnership with that too? Sort of like the partnerships you mentioned with the finances and everything? I think he would. Amen. I think he Good. would. He, he would. Good. Good. So do you have any grandchildren? Me? Yes. Yeah, I got. <laughs> you want me to count my children up? Uh, I mean. <laughs> I only got four, four children living. Okay. Because my one daughter died. I just right. got one daughter and three sons living. Right. Uh, and. Most all the grandchildren is about grown now. But I tell okay. you what I did do, I raised the girl that died, I raised her daughter. All right. And uh, she got pregnant in school, mm -hmm. and I raised her daughter. Of course, I had her name changed and all into Holmes' right. name. And she's doing very well in Jacksonville. Awesome, awesome. Uh, what an amazing story she, and a legacy of love. Uh, she homeschooled her kids. Her husband is a farm D, mm -hmm. working in a pharmacy, and they're doing real well. Awesome, uh, awesome. She got awesome. one smart little girl. She's about, that little girl about 10 years old, mm -hmm. and she's just, it's like that. Wow. I don't know what they're going to do with her. She's so smart. Maybe put in some gifted program so she'll be able to stretch. She is so, oh man. I said, I don't know what you're going to do with her, baby. But, she's but you need to do something and just let her stretch. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, and yes. She's good on news and wanting to advertise stuff, and she's be on the. She just. I don't know. She, she just, absorbs, and she, whatever she absorbs, she's able she, to right, to she, um, put it in in a form and, and is, communicate it in a way. She's a straight A student. Oh, awesome! I hope smart, that continues. Smart. What a blessing! I, I pray about it all the time. Amen. So, total, how many grandchildren do you have? Oh my goodness, I don't even know. I got about twelve. Okay, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Now, how has that affected your life? Yeah. See, it's one thing when you're a parent, but when you become the grandparent, are you spoiling the well, grandchildren? You, you can't help it. <laughs> okay. You, you can't help that. That's something you can't help to spoil the kids. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't consider spoiling them, but, mm -hmm. you know, you do. You trying to help mom out a little bit. Really. Yeah. Help getting a little beaten on the butt sometimes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You have to stop them. No, 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 don't beat that baby this time. Don't do that. But, but I got some good grandchildren. Good. And they obey. Good. And they, uh, they better obey. Because if they don't obey, now, nah. with one of them, their daddy will really pull them down. Uh-oh. But most of them now is about grown except Stephanie's. And the girl I was telling you about, the little yeah. smart girl. Mm -hmm, the 10-year-old. She actually is my... Granddaughter, that's my dead daughter's daughter. Right, 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 right. But uh, I call them, they're still my grandchildren because they're my great grands. So. That's true, that's true. Oh, that that's is so, that is such that's a blessing. Smart. Now, throughout your lifetime, and I know how um, joyful you are all the time, mm -hmm. but throughout your lifetime, how would you describe, what are some of the most challenging difficulties you've had to deal with? When my daughter died, that's the only thing, because otherwise, I had a very good husband. Miss Brown can tell you that. Mm -hmm. Very good husband. No problem at all. Mm -hmm. But when my daughter died, I missed mm -hmm. her, so that was the only thing that struck me so. Wow. Uh, how long ago has that been? Oh, that been about, let me see. Her daddy died. She died in 2008. Okay. Mm-hmm. And she had two kids. They grown. They got children. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have raised her children? No. You didn't? Okay. No, I didn't. Okay. But it still was shocking. Oh, yeah. And surprising yes. and hurting yes. at Because she same lived time. out there by me. Oh, okay. Because we, like, gave her and her husband across the street a okay. spot to put a trailer on. Right. And they lived out there until she had... Till she, well, she was sick, and then she moved in with my house because the doctor said uh, there was nothing else they could do. She had cancer. There was nothing right. else they could do. Right. But uh, what you would like for us to do, uh, we could send her to a home. I said, no, 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 she got a home. She got a home. Yes. You bring her to my house. Right. Can you fix the room up for me? Mm-hmm and I would take my child home. So she came home and we waited on her at home. My daughter okay. in Jacksonville, Pam, uh -huh. she took a leave off her job and came wow. home and stayed with, with us and mm -hmm. helped waited on that child. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we got along good with it. What blessing. But she wasn't a bit of trouble. Not a bit. But that helped ease the pain somewhat, oh, yeah. knowing that she was uh -huh. at home with family. Because they would send people out there to like bathe her and yes. all this. You know what she tell them? No. Oh, I can bathe myself. <laughs> she go in there and run her water in the bathtub, get in the bathtub, take her bath and everything. She would not let those people give her a bath. <laughs> Miss Independent, I wonder where she got that from. I, I don't know. She, <laughs> <laughs> she would not let those people bathe her for nothing. I said, well, why don't you let the lady give you a bath? I can bathe my own self, Mom. That's fine. So as long as she had strength, she's going to take care of herself. And when she lose strength, she wasn't there that long. Oh, okay. Okay. So what did you learn about you from that difficult experience? Mm, I learned that, I don't know, I just, I, I did learn a lot because I was glad she was away. I was glad in one sense that she didn't suffer. Because she didn't seem to me like she was suffering too much. So she was always 
ha act like she was happy, you know. Right. And if she couldn't do it, she didn't want to. She didn't wouldn't tell you that she couldn't do it. Okay. She always would say, "I can do it. I can do it. You don't have to do it." Stuff like that. I but uh, we got along good with it. What did that teach you about your inner strength, about your faith? Oh, my faith. I guess it, it learned me to have better faith than what mm -hmm. I had. Okay. That's what it did. It learned me to, to for my faith to grow better and be better. I, I'm, I'm, I was more strong to, I was more better to, I don't know, because my husband got sick when she got sick, but she died after he died. So he died in in February and she died in the end of the year. So, you know, I it just I I took it pretty good. Mrs. Holm, that's a lot. Yeah, I know it's a lot. That that's I, it, that's a, a lot, lot on it's one person lot. in a short span of time. But apparently you have a lot of inner strength. Mm -hmm. To, to get you through that mm -hmm. and allow you to ride that roller coaster because you mm -hmm. were just dealing with your husband yep. and then your, your daughter. Mm -hmm. And my daughter in Jacksonville, Pam, her boss gave her a leave of absence and told her to come on and stay with me until as long as I needed her. Mm -hmm. And don't worry about it. Don't worry about your paycheck. You're going to get your same money because she was working for Merck, a okay. pharmaceutical company. Mm -hmm. And they let, took, they had her to take off come and stay with me and help me with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was good. I was so happy. You know, it's, it's a blessing when you can work with an employer, mm -hmm. this understanding mm -hmm. of situations. And mm -hmm. it's, your employee is best mm -hmm. and most productive mm -hmm. when you understand what they're going through and try to work with them. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. I found the biggest offense you can do with an employee is what you, how you react and how you treat them mm -hmm. when they're going through something like oh, a family yeah. death oh, or something. Yeah. Uh -huh. They don't forget that. Uh -uh. That's true. So that was very generous of them to, to provide they that time for, for her. They did it for her dad too. They did it for her dad first. They mm -hmm. gave her time off. Then when her sister got sick, they mm -hmm. gave her time off for her. Awesome, awesome. Now mm -hmm. see, she'll be committed to that company oh, yeah. from now on because she never will forget, never forget. Are there any community organizations that you're involved in? No, just that I'm on, I was on the cemetery committee, but I'm off of it now. Okay, mm -hmm. and which cemetery is that? Nunesville Cemetery. Okay, that's a historical cemetery. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's a big and historical cemetery. That's not just any cemetery. Uh -uh. Okay, and how long did you work with that? Oh, let me see. My husband took it over way back there. Um, he went down there one day. And he looked at the cemetery. That was after me and him married. And he said, you know what, the cemetery need cleaning up. It's a wilderness down there. I mm -hmm. said, well, what can you do about that? <laughs> so he said, I think, I think I can get somebody to come and bulldoze, but a bulldoze to go in, because it was terrible. It hadn't been kept up? Mm -mm. So he, some guy with a bulldoze he got to come down there and clean and push up them trees and clean up that cemetery. And don't ask me how he paid him. I don't know. And I, you know, I didn't ask him. I don't right. know whether what he gave the man or whether the man did it free or what he did. And he came back and he told me, he said, I want you to go down there and look at the cemetery. So I went down there. I said, oh, no, this ain't the same cemetery. Because wow. that thing was a wilderness, trees and bushes and everything. And he said, I told you before I left here, before I leave this world, I intend for this cemetery to be cleaned up. Wow. And he got it cleaned up. And I don't know what they ever give the man or if the man did it, just did it for mm -hmm. him. And right from, that's when it started, the cleaning up the cemetery. Wow. And then we got, so we hired Calvin Walker mm -hmm. to keep it up. Mm -hmm. That was under my husband. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Calvin is still one go out there nine do the work you see done in that cemetery. It looks nice. Just mm -hmm. the image that you described of how bad it was then. Oh, yeah. oh it really it looks It was terrible nice. out there. Real bad. It's such a historical cemetery. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad mm -hmm. that he decided mom, to clean it up. He the one had this fence put around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that fence put on wow. the front of it. And um, 
Then they start then s selecting spaces and grave, you know, right. letting right. their family know where they should bury their right. family, at, make sure it's enough space out there for how many people they want to put in a, That's right. a plot. And it, it, it's going good. They, okay. they're going to, but Mr. Calvin is getting kind of old now, and after a while, they're going to need somebody else. You all have already started working to identify the next generation no, of cause, people. Because, see, I'm not on the committee no more. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. But maybe Mr. Calvin knows and others. Uh, Miss Mary Rose, uh, one of the Jackson, two of the Jackson boys on Miss Joanna Jackson. You know her? No. You don't know Miss Jackson? You know no. Miss Bessie Gassett, Garrett? I Bessie remember Miss Garrett. Garrett. Yes. But it's her sister, son. Okay. He's, he's the head person on it now, okay. really. Mr. Calvin is not the no head person. He, okay. we, they got him hired to do the work. Okay. So okay. he's not. Okay. But Miss Joanna's son, Mary Rose, which is Mel Felt's daughter. Okay. And uh, her daughter's on there too because she's the secretary, Mary Rose's daughter. There's three or four of them on there right on, because I just okay. got off it like last year. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. But you've been involved since oh, for a long your time. husband yes, started Lord. doing that. Yes. But you all have done great work, and you work um, on behalf of the Elytra community. Mm -hmm. I want to applaud you all for that, well, because you. that's a uh, historic cemetery, and it's a lot of visitors. Because it was nothing but woods out there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, I told my husband, I don't know how you're going to get it cleaned up. He said, we're going to get it cleaned up. He said, we will get it cleaned up. Well, there's a means, there's a way. And he, he figured did. it out. He got it Amen. Up. Amen. All he got to do is keep it like it is, uh, make some other improvements to it. Right. Which now they need to fix the roads going down in there. They had some sand put in there, but they need to do some paving going down through the cemetery because that sand they put in there, that stuff give away. And they need to put some uh, paved road there, go down in there and it need to be paved out right, there. Right, right, right. Because when it rains, you can't get in there hardly. Wow. And there isn't much room, so I'm glad they instituted plots. Mm -hmm. It looks much better than now. Uh, it yes. looks a thousand times better than it was. <laughs> well, praise God that someone touched, uh, it touched your husband's yeah. heart yeah, to do he, that. Yeah, because he the one had that fence put around there. Well, good. Mm -hmm. That needed to be done. And we tried, at one time he tried to, find somebody that owned the property in the back back there, but he never could find nobody that owned that property back there. I think the state does, when we did the soil collection ceremony, mm -hmm. it was a representative for the state who opened the gate for us to look back there. Oh, you went through that gate on Yeah, the, we went through uh, the gate uh, on that road. Uh -huh. Yeah, because that road used to be part of the road that went from Noonanville to St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. So that's, even that area is historic. It's just that a lot of people don't know the history. Because just think, sometime that cemetery going to get full. Well, it, it probably it's close to much, capacity yeah, now. Yeah, it is. Yes. And they need more, more if they could. But y'all never find out who owned that property back there? It was a representative of the state of Florida who opened the gate for us. Oh. So um, I can property. give you that person's name, number, or you can follow up with them as if the state owns it. What I also, I like to shift gears here. Uh, what do you think about the political climate today in the United States? Uh, I don't know. I just don't know. Think maybe too political or mm -hmm. uh, too divisive. How you mean, like divisions and things? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I, well, what can I say? You know, in um, your years, you you've seen a lot. Mm -hmm. We've gone from uh, there was a time when a lot of um, colored African-American blacks were primarily Republican. Mm -hmm. And then they switch to becoming primarily mm -hmm. Democrats. Democrats. Uh -huh. But has that made a difference? From your per perspective, has that made a difference? Yes. Changing parties? Mm -hmm. In what way? I, I don't even know how to explain that. Okay. Okay. 
What do you think about the, um, the election and the re-election mm -hmm. of former President Barack Obama? How do you feel about that? Uh, uh, no, nah, he's a good president. Okay. Uh, uh, very good, very good president. I was sorry when we couldn't get him back. <laughs> Only two terms, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, most definitely. And that was significant. Mm -hmm. It's significant for America and significant for the African-American mm -hmm. population here. What about, uh, what, what are your thoughts on the Black Lives Matter movement? Black Lives Matter movement? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's, well, what I should say, think it's okay, you know? Well, different people have different perspectives mm -hmm, on it. Mm -hmm. They think it's a great idea that black no, lives are being emphasized and attention. Not just black lives. Right. Not and then there are others lives, is saying yes. that it's all lives matter. All lives yeah. matter, mm -hmm. yes. You're right. Is there, from living here in Alachua, what have you noticed that's different from the time that you and your husband started a family here? Mm -hmm. The here grow, having a family in this environment, how would you say Alachua has changed and how has it stayed the same? No, it, well, it has changed some, but it hasn't changed a lot. Oh, okay. It hasn't changed a lot. You willing to share with me some specifics? Mm, I, I don't know, just... You got another traffic light. I remember it used to be just that one. Yeah, it was another traffic light. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, another traffic light. Mm -hmm. uh, the library is bigger. We got a, I started to see the libraries mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And then we're able to go eat wherever we want to eat at. Yes, here, yes. Which yes. I don't ever hardly go to none of them down there, but I do sometimes. You know, we, we are able to go there if we want to. That's right. That's uh -huh. different. That's different. That's different. Mm -hmm. How has integration affected the uh, city of Alachua, and you know, from your perspective, because there was Mabane. Mm -hmm. Mabane um, was um, yep. African American School All of school. Prestige. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. And then the, that school was up there exactly where you're at now. Yes. But it was all, you know. And it had a reputation, not mm -hmm. a bad reputation, mm -hmm. it had a very good reputation uh -huh. academically, mm -hmm. in terms of extracurriculum activities mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. So your children got to go to Mabane? Yeah, my children went to Mabane. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All of my children went to Mabane. Okay. No, I better take that back. I had someone to go to elementary school to to er, to this school up here. Lotra oh, Elementary, Lotra Elementary? yes, and that's then, the oldest. I didn't have them go to the new school. Now. They right. had all graduated and gone, but they went over to this school over here. Yes, now that, mm -hmm. I think that's the oldest of all yeah, the elementary it is. schools. Can you think of some other ways integration impacted this community? As far as uh, doctor offices and things, when you go in oh, doctor okay. office, we don't have to sit in a certain place. We can sit where we want to sit at. Yes, good. And you get to choose And that. in a cafeteria, is the same. You know, you sell places for different people to sit. Right, but right. it's not like that in the way. You sit right. where you want to sit at. Right, right, right. What about the level of service? Mm -hmm. We have the access, but mm -hmm. what about the level of service? Have you seen any different? No. Do people treat you differently? Most times we are treated not okay. We okay. are treated okay when we go in to eat a dinner somewhere, and we always treat it nice. Good, 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 good. That's, that's good to know, mm -hmm. because people have different experiences based mm -hmm. on where they are. Well, sometimes it's the way you act towards people sometimes. Right. You, know, mm -hmm. you know, some people go in places and they want to show out anyway. Right. I don't care who they are. Mm -hmm. But if you go in places with the right attitude and mm -hmm. spirit, you're fine. People will treat you the same way. You know, the way right. you treat them, they treat you the same way. Right. Most definitely. Most definitely. When the segregation, um, desegregation was imposed on everyone, particularly in the South, mm -hmm. what was your observation in terms of the community? Um, was the African-American community here sort of self-contained? You got my bane. The African-American community sort of kept itself and had its own businesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how did desegregation affect that? With me? Yes. Oh, and also with the community, what did mm -hmm. you observe? 
I, I, I'm going to be frank with you, I got along with all of them. Okay. I got along with everybody because I tried to treat everybody the same. Right. Now, there was an area uh, known as the bottom, and they had some businesses there. I don't know nothing about the bottom because I wasn't allowed in the bottom. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but what I, I was, wasn't allowed in the bottom. What I was going to say is that for the black businesses that they did have here mm -hmm. locally, mm -hmm. I was wondering about how did desegregation uh, open access to everything for everybody? How did that impact those businesses? Whether or not they were still able to thrive or now some of the customers started going other places because the fact we got open access. Mm -hmm. They did. Okay. They start going other places. Okay. Okay. Let's see. How do you feel about COVID-19? It has affected all of us. All of us. All yes. of us. Uh, not only in the United States, but around the world. That's right. But here it is going on almost two years, two years. Uh -huh. of its impact upon us in America. Mm -hmm. How has that personally impacted you and your family? Well, it has in some sense. But I say like this, these things come about. We need to do whatever we are asked to do. Mm -hmm. Like some people will not take the, the shots. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? I mean, if it's something to benefit you, why right. not take it? Right. And then a lot of people right now don't even wear the masks. You right. go in stores, you see them, they don't have masks on. They're walking all over the store. And when I go in the store, mm -hmm. I have my mask on. I don't care where I go, I have my mask on. Right. And I look down certain aisles in the store, and if mm -hmm. there's nothing down there all I need, I don't go down there. And if I see a crowd down in there, mm -hmm. I don't go down in there, even though I have my mask on. Right. No, I understand. You're taking all precautions. Oh, you're still oh, trying God. to live your daily life, oh, but yes, you're still taking Lord. precautions. Mm -mm. Been staying home more. I know a lot of people right. been spending more time at home. And these people, I watched the football game Saturday before last. I don't believe I've seen 10 masses. I watched it too. I don't remember. Uh, them people had no masses on. And in close proximity and shouting and everything. Yes, right. We they just have to continue to pray, don't they we? They won't find me sitting up in there. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't want football that bad. But no one in your family, as far as you know, has been impacted in mm -mm. terms of illness mm -mm. or sickness. Mm -mm. Oh, that's a blessing. Mm -mm. That's a blessing. But it seems like we're going to be dealing with this for a while. At first, I had a little... Um, about my son. He said, oh, no, I ain't going to do this and I ain't going to do that. You know how some is. Yes. I, I said, you going. Don't you come to my house. Mm -mm. You go in and take that shot. And he hung around and hung around. And then he told me one day, he said, Mom, I think I'll go take the shot. I said, thank you. <laughs> See, he had mom supporting him. He was going to take the shot. Because every time I saw him, I nailed him with it. See? Don't you come to my house. And I'm your son. I said, don't you come to my house. If you don't go get that shot, don't come to my house. Mm-hmm. But he, he, he almost himself in a minute and took it. Well, I applaud you for supporting that because it's, yes, it's about you freely yeah. giving your arm, but it impacts not only you, but your next door neighbor and everybody right, else. Right, right, Is there anything that uh, we haven't talked about that I haven't asked you that you would like to share at this time that you would mm -hmm. like to... Share about living in Alachua, your, um, your family experiences living here. Because you know it's called Alachua, the good life community. Right, right. But see, I live out in the rural area. Mm -hmm. And I only come down here if I need to go to the grocery store or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, otherwise, I don't come down here for nothing. If I got something to go to the store for to get that, I come down here, but that's about all. Well, I come to church over there, right. but we're not having church right now. Okay. So. You are doing it online? Doing it online. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's one significant impact in the African-American community is. Mm -hmm. is the fact that the churches are closed and we're having. And we still to, having church. Yeah, we still having, still church. having church. That's um, a blessing mm -hmm. because um, 
we are the, pe the children of God are the church. Mm -hmm. That's just a building. Mm -hmm. But the fact is you're still able to come together and keep your focus right. on Almighty God. Because we going into our annual conference in October oh, okay. in Jacksonville. Okay. And, uh, but it's going to be on Zoom. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have our missionary day. We'll have that day. We have the opening of our conference and we'll have It'll, be, it'll go on about four days. Oh, okay. But we'll okay. be on Zoom with it. You're very active in your church? Oh, yeah. Always has oh, yeah. been? Oh, yeah. I just finished paying my dues to go to the conference <laughs> in Jacksonville <laughs> in October. <laughs> Already paid. Well, you know, for, for some people, church is like um, an extension of the home. Mm. You know, if I'm not at home and I'm not at work, then it's church. Yeah, that's right. Because we had to go to church now. Yes. There was no play job there. Yes. Sunday yes. morning, Sunday school. Yes. And at church, twice a day, morning at, morning service, afternoon service, and sometimes six o'clock service. You know, wow. You, you know, but you had to do it. Yes, you did. Yes, well, you did. no, I'm, I'm tired. I'm going home. Can I go home? No. No. You were in church. Right. And we can tell the difference between then and now. Mm. Oh, yes. yes. They go if they want to now. Yeah. <laughs> they go if they want to. They tell their mamas what to do. That's what it is. They tell mama what to do or daddy what to do. Oh, that they is a significant mama difference. Tell them, but it wasn't like that in my house. Whatever mom and daddy say, that's what went. Yeah. That wasn't what I experienced growing up in the lodge that, either. Right. Uh-uh. Well, Mrs. Holmes, it's been a pleasure, but is there anything else? Did you would like to share with us um, any closing remarks or anything? You did say y'all going to try to do something with the cemetery, try to get something done with the cemetery down there? No, I was going to um, try to connect you the contact information on the person who uh, led us into the gate for that oh, area yeah, behind Rose, there. Yeah, yeah. and uh, maybe they might be able to help you all identify who owns that property. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yes. they were talking about we need some more space. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I don't know, but I, I do know this. It is so rich. Did you and your husband know about Noonanville, the whole town and the history? Yeah, it, it's, it's very rich the history. The Franklin there. family may have some information on that. Okay. I don't know if to do or not because Mr. Ed Franklin was the one that was over that cemetery before my husband took it over. Okay. That was years ago. Okay. And let me see if he got any, his family, li he got some grandchildren living. Mr. Ed got some grandchildren living. I don't think he have even a son or a daughter living. I don't think he does. Oh, I think they're all dead. Okay, okay. Well, I want to give you an early Happy birthday okay. to you. Thank you so much. And I want to tell you, thank you so much for agreeing to share your story, your way with your own voice. And uh, all those that will see this video, your children and your great grand, mm -hmm. they will know what an awesome, awesome mother you, you are and oh. great, great, great grandmother. Because I never did this before. <laughs> you did a great job. You did a great job. And we did years old. Yes, 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 yes. I never yes. did it before. Yes, but you did a great job, and it's indeed a pleasure. And I just want to say thank you. Okay, and I thank you. Glad I came. Yes, I did the best I could. You did very well. You did very well.